What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Too Much Test Podcast, episode 30, live on three different YouTube channels at the same time. I am here with Sam Stolt and David DiMasquita. Uh, we all have links to the different stuff that we are associated with. If you do find that you like this podcast, we are on all major podcast platforms. I will let Sam and David let you know where to find them. David, go ahead, brother. Yeah, so on Instagram, I'm at dynamite underscore d that my youtube is going to be david mesquita if you're already viewing there i appreciate you all and uh tiktok i think is just my name as well so sam take it away uh it's everywhere sam stole i'm i'm pretty much awesome everywhere <laughs> you got any social any social you go to so you can just find me i'll be there awesome it's fine how you guys doing bro? how you guys doing I'm doing well. I'm excited about this. Sam actually found this program to where we can do it all just live on YouTube. And it's like, wow, this is really cool. So if you guys are out there watching and ask us some questions, I mean, we may not be able to get to all of them, but we will try our best. But I think this is going to be a really cool platform and we're going to do this, cool. uh, you know, every, every couple of weeks. Yes. Okay. So before we got on, David was talking about how he had some awesome gut stuff going on how did, yeah. your, how did your competition go the competition went really well um it plays a bit higher but you know it is what it is like the judges feedback i completely agreed with and they basically said bring a bigger upper body my lower body was probably one of the biggest on stage for sure but the density in the upper body didn't match the guy at least that was first place the guy that first place was a freak of nature even if I was to stand next to him in second place, there's no way I would have beaten him on any given day. Uh, so his first call outs um, at the national show. So you have to either get first or second place to qualify for a national show. I want an overall show and I want a class actually. So I did like qualify two times over. Then I went to the national show and I got a um, top call out in men's physique as well as men's classic physique. Classic physique was, um, 20 guys and then men's physique guys actually one call out only eight guys and i finished uh seventh in classic and sixth in men's physique surprisingly because at the first show they were like you're like built for classic well trying to squeeze down to that weight cap i sacrificed some of that density in the upper body which i need more density in the upper body but it is what it is you can only do so much with what you're given and your, then, your face looked really like not like David's face <laughs> when you when I when I saw some of your pictures, you looked awesome. And, and I looked at your face, I was like, oh man, damn, he was super, super depleted. <laughs> but go, go ahead. I, I made my weight cap actually by 0. 0.04 pounds. They said it's the closest they've ever seen someone make a weight cap by. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I heard what you were on, what like Trend, Clen, T3, T4, uh, DNP, and Yohimbine. No, the only thing I took was DMP. Actually, I tried to make sure that I turned myself into a bomb, so I looked fire on stage. Oh, yeah, oh, dope. So what? Because uh, we've talked about DMP before, and you were, we've gone back and forth. I'm, a, I'm definitely a big fan of DMP. Dude, I, I won't touch. What's up, Chad? <laughs> Gabriel, I'm just saying hi to got comments. Here. What's up, Gabe? Gabriel, how you doing, brother? Uh, and Chad, what's good, brother? Um, what? So what did you, what did you do for your dosing on DMP? What did I do for my what? Your DNP dosing. I didn't do any DNP. <laughs> well, the thing is, you did do DNP. The closest thing I got to DNP was eating fish, asparagus, and under sixty grams of carbs. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was under sixty grams of carbs. I was combined with veggies and fruit, just enough liver glycogen to survive. And I was doing approximately two hours of cardio a day going into the show. Um, it was a uh, it was scary because looking at the videos that Caroline filmed of me and my videographer filmed of me, it's really actually painful for, for me to watch it because I actually know the amount of pain that I'm actually in when I'm going through the, and the amount of suffering. So it's, it's hard to actually watch myself. Like the one video that just released recently on my lifestyle one, I was having to actually hold on to the treadmill. I think I trained legs the day before or I got deep tissue the day before. And for some reason, my torn hip labrum, I couldn't stand. I can walk. So I was having to actually hold on to the side of the treadmill because it was like, I couldn't put the leg forward. So I was making sure that I could keep walking forward. So I put myself on a treadmill like a hamster and just went. And that was like one of the, one of the only days I ever held on, but that was a real what, day. What, what, were you before, what were you weight wise before you started putting the show? You were 220 or something, right? 
Um, yeah, I was around 220 pounds, but that was me downsized. I mean, I'm actually me sitting here right now, just 14 days later, I'm 220 pounds right now. Like me talking. What did you cut down to for the stage? 190 and it was 189 point blah, 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 blah. Uh, not yeah. nine, six. Right. Wow. So. so it's 30 pounds in what? 12 weeks. No, that was like 20 weeks. So it, it takes me a while to get down there. Um, my body grows in preps because I don't really touch androgens in the off season. Really. I've never like been a huge fan of like needing them to grow. I think a little bit of the test and growth hormone goes a really long way. I, we, we've talked about my methodology in the off season. I think a little bit of test and primo, if you want to get really jiggy with it kind of thing. Um, but ultimately I hadn't been on androgens in, a year and a half by the time I went into that show. So I was like, my body was ready to roll. And yeah, that's good awesome. stuff. I have an interesting question for you guys. And I also read a pretty cool study about Clomid recently that they did. Um, so I talked to Sam about this on the last episode. So I'd bring David up. So I got a lab test for my doctor, right? All the normal TRT stuff. Yep. And I did it exactly like 100%, like a real, my real protocol, 200 milligrams a week uh freaking pharmaceutical brand and i did it exactly what my normal trough is and i pulled like a 728 and i pulled between 1400 and 500 on that same protocol like not fudging the numbers not anything so i jumped up my dose to uh 250 milligrams a week uh to get up in that thousand range what do you guys think is there is there a number of milligrams per week cut off to where it's not trt anymore or do you think it's just based on like total tests and free tests, uh, you know, the actual numbers? Go ahead, Sam, you want, you want me to answer this? All right. So I think 200 milligrams a week is TRT. That's like max threshold TRT. But some people just have poor conversion ratios. They just do. And it is what it is. I think. Did you, did you, did you catch what he was saying though? He had like 200 milligrams and then tested like, what do you do the Wednesday beforehand and then you test it Thursday morning or something? So if I was doing it, so I used to do it Monday, Thursday. So I would inject on Monday evening and then I'd go Thursday morning, you know, right around nine ish. I switched okay. it to Sunday, Wednesday. So this is on Wednesday, but. But he, he, he did, he did this test like, and then he does it again and it's a completely fucking different number and he's using the same amount of test. That almost, sound, and I've actually heard of this happening before. I've heard of compounding pharmacies missing the mark. And I'm just letting you know, because there is no way at 200 milligrams of test, you should be that low, especially if you're testing and you're shooting that frequently. And that's just my transparency thoughts, because I've actually seen issues with compounding pharmacies not being as accurate. If you're this, on is actually CIPLA. this is actually CIPLA from Walmart. What? Yeah. That's crazy. So <laughs> 200, 200 milligrams a week, you should be pulling back like clear over a thousand. Like I don't, up to like 1500 sometimes people at 200 milligrams can pull back almost a 2000 score actually oh i've 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 pulled it back before i pulled back 200 milligrams per week um i think i tested it two days later maybe so that would have been like peak half-life anyways and i'm pretty sure i pulled back like a 2400 or something like that which it, but my conversion is crazy that's one reason why like i hyper respond on paper so why i don't really need much now, as TRT levels, I think that like 300 milligrams a week is the max threshold for, that I would consider like a sports TRT dose um, and like professional athletes and stuff like that. <laughs> 300, 300 the TRT. That's okay. We'll, we'll be at 2,500 a week. No big deal. That's perfectly normal. That's perfectly normal. Sorry about and I read a pretty interesting study, and I'm not going to give all the details because I have a video coming out on it tomorrow. But uh, it was an interesting. It did, they did it, uh, a, a, a freaking study on Clomid, and so they took took a bunch of guys who had under 300 total test, and they gave them 50 milligrams of Clomid a day, which is a healthy dose for 40 days, and then they tested them it again um, in six months, and. Fun fact, 24% of them uh, had their testosterone levels stay 166 points higher. So six months later. Oh, so wow. it's like a oh, HPTA like reboot, you know, because I mean, yeah. well out of your system in six months. Hey, if you send me that study, that's super interesting. Yeah. yeah. So well, how, how, long they, how long did they take Clomid and how much were they taking? 
think 50, 50 milligrams for 40 days. Huh. And then they stopped and then they, uh, and then they, they tested them in six months. Interesting. Yeah. I've actually heard of that stuff being done. And um, even taking like Clomid or even Novodex on cycle can actually aid in that. Uh, in fact, in, in increasing your testosterone levels. So this um, is a good question, actually. Yeah. Ten, 10 days, I'll, I'll read it and then you guys can respond to it. Yeah. Um, 10 days out today, feeling super fatigued, added carbs in this week to maintain my weight, glutes straighted, any advice going into the show? I have never competed, so I'm gonna let David uh, David answer that one. Yeah, sure. So um, 10 days out from the show, you should be super fatigued anyways. In fact, usually I try to, it depends on your condition, right? Um, if you're at the point where you can start like going linear with your, and I don't know what division you're in, but going linear with your food, where you just maintain that best look for you and you can just coast in the show, that's great. But if you have a weight cap to hit and you still need to keep dropping, you should probably not be adding a refeed 10 days out. You should kind of coast into that first week, into the peak week. And then if you have that room for food and can start doing a slow linear load, um, loading slowly, you, some people front load, some people back load. You have to make a weight cap. You're always back loading. Uh, classic phys- there we go. Coaching classic the show. Coaching into the show. Very well under my weight limit. Okay. Then in that case, figure out where your best look is. If you're striated glutes, but you don't want to lose your conditioning level, you should be super fatigued and feel terrible by this point. So <laughs> just eating to feel good isn't going to do anything. Drop your stress levels down. Maybe reduce down your cardio. And then I always like reducing down cardio to reduce down cortisol levels. And then you slowly start transitioning over into food because sometimes just reducing that cardio alone will start to slowly fill you out from the amount of food that you're having. Because think about calories in versus calories out, but you're also reducing down the inflammation in your legs. So your glutes actually in your legs and your hamstring lines may come in harder. You reduce down the cardio and then you slowly manipulate. Do, do you do you ever get like uh, go too far? So when you are prepping for a show, right? Two weeks out, do you want to be basically ready to go two weeks out so that you can start to flip flop back and forth with tr- figuring out like exactly how you want to how like what's the perfect look in terms of your carbs intake and that kind of thing? Yeah, and when weight caps come involved, which like for instance, two of my athletes right now for junior nationals, one of them is four weeks out. And he's going to be the he, if he stepped on stage today, he'd be the leanest one on stage. And then the other one is going to be ready probably a week and a half out. I think I try to have everyone two weeks ready out. Some people four weeks ready out and linear load and they, like hold the look, and then they, their cortisol levels drop. And I can drop their cardio. I can do all that stuff. And these guys are squeezing the weight cap, so they're kind of like grinding in this show. Where I'm probably going to actually start to do some water manipulation techniques as I'm actually feeding them into it. So I'm dropping actually inflammation from reducing down their cardio. I'm increasing food, but I'm also dropping their weight from their water. So it's that happy median. Now, if you have, for instance, like Trung was saying, where they're way under weight cap and you're two weeks out from the show and you're ready to roll, Find that like a nice low amount where you're just eating food and maintaining a decent look and dropping down your stress levels. And then you can do a load of some sort, but don't load too hard. Like if you have a good look, just step on stage. Like don't manipulate water. If hey, you're give, give, give some give some context for people who are gonna listen or watch that don't yeah. know what a load what, don't, don't know what a load is going okay. into a show. Right. So there's gonna be people who don't, don't have any understanding of what that means. And this way to help bring other people. Yeah, so loading is when you're actually incorporating food. So it can be fats or carbohydrates. We're not really talking about proteins. You're not loading on protein, um, which protein actually can be a cool tool for pulling water, actually, because the production of urea in the kidneys actually pulls water out. Now, either way, protein should actually probably reduce rather than increase because you're just using it for a muscle sparing agent by the time you're getting to the show, usually. Um, and you reduce digestive distress by reducing that protein. Now that's out of the way. Now we're talking about fats. Fats is one way to load down the muscle tissue as well. Most people only talk about carb loading. The difference is, is carbs load skeletal tissue, whereas fats do not. So you can load both forms of tissue with fats and carbohydrates. There's also a pretty cool interaction between fats and carbohydrates 
or fat will increase insulin sensitivity as well. So there's a cool interaction there. So a lot of people, or what I like to do personally, is if I have no weight cap involved, I like to slowly increase carbohydrates through that week, maybe halfway through the week or deep or on Thursday or Friday, I incorporate some fats and I see how the fats with the carbs respond. If I need to, if they respond really well, then I kind of keep it steady there. So it's very, very bio-individual. Some people respond really well to fats going to a show. Some people, it causes digestive distress. So it's increasing calories going into a show. A lot of people just go way overboard and they do all these crazy loads and they just overspill themselves and they're soft on stage. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you end up looking like when are, what? too much effort on stage. T-Y-L, when are you gonna when are you gonna do a show? I'm doing do probably uh, probably in six months. I'm gonna do my first female show, and I am going to fuck them up. They're <laughs> I'm gonna be so much bigger and more mass than them. They're just not gonna be able to compete because <laughs> no, uh, I'll identify as a woman for that day, and I'll be good to go. You should do a show though. That would be an awesome. Hell show. No. Could document here. Hell no. I'm not. I am not trying to do that. That is not my style. I would rather be like kind of like I'd rather look like the world strongman guys than than the bodybuilding. But I do yeah. want to say what's up to Silas. He just started TRT. He's on 200 milligrams of sip per week, split dose. It's pretty much exactly what I do. Um, says he's feeling like he's firing on all cylinders. And I just wanted to point out that, you know, TRT, a lot of the benefits don't come in the first two months. Yep. Uh, there's benefits such as like bone density that don't even like fully take effect until like two years. So yeah, just keep on, uh, keep on it, you know, get your exercise, be consistent with your shots and, uh, yeah, you'll just continue to feel pretty much better and better. I, I have a, my buddy who sent me over some Ludwig. He's doing his first like 500. Uh, he really wanted to do 500. I was like, bro, you could just do 250 or 300 and you'll be good because you're you're virgin to gear, right? Like you're virgin to testosterone. He already had a high, high total test, like around eight or 900 range, depending on when he got his test done. So um, he just sent me Ludwig uh, after. I think it's been six weeks or so, uh, and is is it's interesting to look at referencing the beforehand because there's a bunch of changes with his like blood work. Nothing in, in terms of his hematology, nothing like crazy where you're like, oh shit, this is fucked up. But it's just interesting to to look at. Um, I wanted to ask probably David. Uh, he has trending down for his free T4 and his album is. Uh, I forgot what I wrote down here, actually. His, I think his album was high. I have to look at his blood work again. Uh, but I think his album was high. And I was reading some study that was talking about vitamin D might actually help with the, that because the enzyme related to it or something. It wasn't like none of these were bad or out of range. I just wanted to, hey, if this is trending in this direction from two data points, uh, if we start to make the changes now, then when we check blood work again, when you're done with this shit, it won't be out of range. Yeah. So just really quickly on the albumin, usually I just target the liver there. So like some Tudka and NAC, or you can do glutathione, but I think NAC works like a charm. So and it saves you money. So NAC and Tudka, I think are the solution there. Um, when it comes to, you said T4, what was this TSH, T4, and T3? I would need the full picture. Uh, I can pull that up uh, if you guys want to talk about something for a second. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a good subject. I actually wanted to bring up, I recently did a video on ashwagandha and like everyone knows ashwagandha because it's sold in like every supplement for raising testosterone, <laughs> you know, along with like Tonkat Ali and Tribulus and, you know, all that other stuff. But dude, I was looking at some of these freaking studies, like it's a, it's a 15 fucking minute video. Like I wasn't planning on making that long of a video, but I just start reading, you know, uh, 58 participants took it for eight weeks and it significantly reduced perceived stress levels and co- lower cortisol, which is known to do. Uh, another 60 people for 60 days had reduction in anxiety. Uh, 12 studies in women, men and women results say it may enhance physical performance in, including strength and oxygen during use. Uh, wow. All this is all from ashwagandha? Yeah. No. Yeah. 1,000 milligrams for 12 weeks had greater reductions in depression and anxiety, um, reduced depression, reduced blood sugar, A1C, insulin, blood lipids, oxidative stress markers. I was like, holy shit. 
significant wow. reductions in C-reactive protein, which is the inflammation in the body. I was like, damn, this stuff's badass. Look up uh, the form of ashwagandha called Shodin. I guarantee you've never even heard of it. Like the most potent form of ashwagandha. So instead of KSM 66, they switch over that in Calm, and it makes a world of a difference. It's actually better than KSM. So. It is. Uh, are you are you guys a fan of ashwagandha? I remember taking that like well over probably a decade and a half ago, and I haven't like taken it since then. But uh, I haven't. I, well, do you take it like regularly? I don't. I haven't taken it in so fucking long. I have been taking six so. years straight. Six. Yeah. Do you take? Do you take like weekends off or like a month off every once in a while? No, nope, I probably should. You, but you really like it that much, bro? I usually get have panic disorder. I've had one panic attack since I started. Now there, I take it's possible to do the serine and ashwagandha. Those are the two major ones, but changed my life. Really? Wait. So, what's your what's your dose for the ashwagandha? ashwagandha? Are you taking that weird one you just mentioned? To yeah. The so the KSM sixty six was at six hundred milligrams a day, and then I forgot the one that helps with uh, sleep a little bit better. It's another form of it. Um, uh, so I take it before bed as well. Uh, but the KSM sixty six was at six hundred milligrams per watt. Shodan is at one hundred and twenty milligrams. It's the most potent yielding form of ashwagandha so they just actually implemented that in calm so i just switched over to it and then the phospholipid was over at 800 milligrams a day now i think they moved the dose down to 600 and it hasn't shown a negative impact or so you're, ta you're taking two different types of ashwagandha yeah let me pull up the other kind i uh, sensoril that's it sensoril I, I believe it's sensoril um, and let me pull up that just to confirm yeah, i'm going to read this question from tony pina yeah. thank you uh tony Wow, I'm at 200 milligrams of SIP every two weeks. How do I get my doctor to up my dose to just 200 per week? Switch doctors, bro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would be probably the first thing. Well, it depends. Tony, are you feeling really good? Like, are you where are you, like, do you feel awesome? Are you happy with your results in terms of, like, your overall sense of well-being? Is your, is your blood work good? Right? You would want to, like... Talk to him about some of those things. Look at the do look at the frequency though. Two hundred milligrams oh. every two. Yeah, I guess, yeah. He's on that old protocol from like the seventies, so he's probably watching me like, oh, I pulled seven twenty eight, and I just upped my dose to two fifty, and he's like, fucking tyl, the asshole. My doctors only give me two hundred a week. Yeah, they're definitely trying to give you some estrogenic side effects there, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let me pull up. Let me pull up a little chart here so we can show this. And then I did. Um, I pulled up the blood work for my buddy so that we can actually take a look at his yeah so HIV. tony that's like an old school endocrinologist i don't care about if you have estrogen side effects dose and frequency and i don't care if you crash on days you know 11 through 14 <laughs> literally crap <laughs> so this is week one and week two uh week three right so when you when you take a dose of cypionate you you basically just go like this and then it kind of comes, it comes down to right about, this is supposed to be halfway down, right? And then normally at two weeks, at a, one week later, you take another dose like that. And it would, then it would come down to somewhere around here. Now, if you're doing it, this, this every two weeks. So if, it, if you were to erase these across the bottom and just say, this is like week one here in the center. So you, or week two, I'm sorry. And or whatever, however his protocol is, you're taking this giant dose that puts you out of probably normal range, uh, more than likely. And then by the time this is done, you're like way back down here. You're way, yeah. you're, you're like super low. So no and repeat. Yeah. But it sucks. No. And I'm sure he's probably, he's in a rough spot. And a lot of guys end up this way because he's getting it through his doctor. He's probably getting it through insurance. So it's probably super cheap for him. Um, you know, but he's getting cool. a shit protocol. So, I mean, and, and if Tony, doctors, uh, Tony are, you, are you are you injecting or is your doctor injecting? If you're injecting, I would just switch to 200 and do 100 per week. Yep. It's uh, the same, same exact thing. You'll just get better results by doing that. Yep. And yeah, but even then, the you know, yeah. even I don't understand how these doctors do that protocol and then they get a blood test on a trough and they don't see them as super low. Well, I, well, they do, but I'm gonna just allude to the reasoning why they do this is because the natural hill and troughs of testosterone are naturally in males 14 day cycles but when you're freaking injecting over super physiological numbers right off the rip and it tanks back down then estrogen just goes sky high and then tanks down then estrogen because we don't see the estrogenic side effects in natural males that have 
even like middle range testosterone and when it's cycling in and out. But when you're injecting 1500 nanogram or deciliter testosterone or even higher, if you have higher conversion <laughs> down to nothing, then it's going to cause some issues and cholesterol issues too. Cause so you're, you're basically on a seesaw, Tony, where if you broke it up a little bit, you'll have it kept the dose the same. You'd probably feel a little bit better, like 50 milligrams on Sunday, 50 milligrams on Wednesday, 50 milligrams on Sunday, 50 milligrams on Wednesday type of thing. So you're still at 200 milligrams total for two weeks, but just spreading out the dose, like David was saying, you get less conversion to estrogen. Uh, you don't have as much of like, kind of like, I want to say emotional swings, but maybe just like feeling really, really like high and manic in terms of you feel really good, then you need to back down to like, eh, kind of thing feeling. Cause that's what Even happens. nipple sensitivity issues for sure. And this is kind of cool because this is like repeats almost like what we're about to reinforce. Uh, this is a Leonard, uh, yeah. Plank Leonard. Leonard. Yeah, the third. <laughs> I love the name. <laughs> we should just have me try to pronounce the everybody's name. <laughs> 200 milligrams a week, broken into three doses per week to limit estrogen. Yes. So this is how I think all three of us do this. I used Melanotan 2 HCG. Rotate Cialis and Viagra three months and then switch. Ah, this is awesome. This sounds like yeah. something we would do. It's interesting. Yeah. It's rotating Cialis and Viagra. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. What's the thought process behind that? Well, I, I'll, I'll kind of talk to that as well. So um, 200 milligrams, yeah, split into three doses will limit down estrogenic side effects. If you're not someone that has estrogen or aromatization issues and you just don't want to pin as frequently, two times a week is fine. Um, I don't have issues with it. Some guys do. If you increase frequency, he's absolutely correct there. Um, the whole microdosing thing, I just think creates pin fatigue. So I don't believe in injecting every single day. No one in aromatize that heavily. And then um, the Melanotan 2, <laughs> I'll speak to my personal experience. I hate, I literally will not touch Melanotan. It gets me so sick and nauseated. I tried doing it before bed and stuff like that. And the raging erections that I would get that were uncontrollable. What's your, what dose are you taking? I was like, so I was taking like micro my new dose. I'm talking like a quarter of the recommended dose for fair skin. And I was getting like so nauseated. Like I was like, you feel it in your stomach and like you feel like turning. And then all of a sudden I feel like a knife was like opening you up. And then I'm like, and I'm like, you oh feel my like, gosh, I'll sit there and start sweating. Like my stomach feels like crap. I'll be talking to somebody. I'm just like confusedly sweating and the AC is on. And I'm like, oh, my stomach feels like shit right now. And you guys do, doing this just for a tan? Literally, it sounds it sounds like uh he's doing it for sex or, or libido yeah. benefits yeah. because melanotan cialis and viagra like that's oh, so, I, so i heard someone someone mentioned to me on my one of my shorts on uh pt141 that they get crazy bad nausea and i know they're both kind of in the same family pt for me is was worse than melanotan too. really PT, like the i took like normally if i'm researching with the, the new compound i never researched with before I'll take like half of the normal dose or like half of the half of the normal dose just for the first day to see if I have any strange reactions. And PT one for one is like Melanotan two on steroids when it comes to nausea for me. It's horrible. Like I, I don't even want, I tried it twice and I was like, I can't do this anymore. It's so bad. So I have it sitting at my house right now. I'm gonna do an experiment on it soon. I did a few peptide experiments actually. Uh, that's one of them that I line up. So HCG is phenomenal. If you're staying on tier T, stay on HCG, as long as you're not paying $400 a vial. And then um, rotation of Cialis and Viagra, I thought was super interesting too. So Cialis, I'll just <laughs> say from personal experience, I took Viagra two times and one, crazy pressure headaches, even with the low dose. And erectile, erection wise, like it wasn't as good as Cialis actually. And then on top of it, it caused erectile dysfunction after I stopped taking it. I ran out of Cialis and I was like, oh, what can I do for prostate inflammation? I can take some Viagra and I had to have some on hand. Never again. I did it for like two days and it caused like literally erectile dysfunction. <laughs> and it took me like almost a month to get like my, my erection back to normal. I'm the really opposite, man. Takes Viagra and gets ED. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, doing a, I'm doing like this microdosing of like, um, I think it's Levitra, Cialis, and uh, Viagra. So there's a slight difference. If you look at like, I don't remember where, I did a video on this, but PDE5 is the enzyme, right? That is inhibited by Cialis and Viagra. One of them also has another peripheral effect of one of the other PDEs. 
and I don't remember which one it was or what the peripheral effects from that other inhib like inhibiting or interacting with that other PE is, but that was like the thought process behind it. But I'm also microdosing uh, GW, GW501516. <laughs> With with the three of those together, uh, it's definitely very interesting. It's pretty. Totally when I was reading up on doing so, when I was we're doing a video on Cialis, it was talking about you know it yeah. uh, it inhibits PDE five or whatever it is. He's like, but it also inhibits PDE ten, I and mean, we have no fucking clue what happens with that long term. And I was like, oh, that's great. So was I didn't, that I didn't know. Was more than Cialis? one PDE. Was that with Cialis? Yeah, it was. I think it was. It was comparing some of them. It was like Viagra, you know, inhibits this one, but doesn't do these ones compared to Cialis. Yeah. Fun story. Just... I got prescribed Cialis by my doctor. I just told her I was like, real casually, I was like, yeah, I've been taking Cialis like ten milligrams a day for blood pressure. She's like, okay, we'll write a script. I went and gotten filled, and it wasn't crazy expensive. But it was like twenty five bucks for thirty of them, and I'm like. I'm getting this shit cheaper for research. I mean, obviously I can't take that because it's not for humans. I can just give it to my rat and I don't know, you know, the neighborhood dog. We, def we definitely need to add a disclaimer to the front of these videos. Like this is the first <laughs> allowed one, but if they're going to be on YouTube, we definitely need to add a disclaimer. Guys, we're not saying you should do any of the things that we talk about in these videos. <laughs> um, Fr Freedom Fox. I'm actually surprised how oh, shit. close. Oops, oh, my bad, my bad. You're good, you're good, you're good. Um, I'm actually surprised how close my recent trough and peak were injecting 140 milligrams once a week, uh, 922 and 1,088, but two weeks is typically too long. That's interesting. 140 uh, once a week, and that's, that's pretty good. My buddy's taking 125. We also, like, there's a, the, at least from my background in the bodybuilding fitness community and David's, uh, not as much with TOI, but there's a more of like people in our lives that are probably way higher than super physiological. <laughs> like we understand that stuff, but, but a lot of people that take that we are around take a lot higher dosages than that. Yeah. I mean, like, but it's crazy because like you also have some guys at like 120 milligrams a week, no cardio issues at all so they stick with that and they're still at like 1500 milligram per deciliter they tested uh, when it's starting to peak or close to peak levels so it's pretty crazy some people just convert really well just like me i convert very very well um so very very bio individual i just want to say we have a a comment from the future president 2024 and he <laughs> it looks to be juicy <laughs> 2024 my clinic prescribes 80 million i always have extra tests so i've been blasting 140 twice a week for the win that's, <laughs> that's bigly that's bigly that's huge that's the best comments absolutely walking around power level 9000 man <laughs> um, and this is uh leonard um to, 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 of angiogenesis cialis allows for my flaccid to hang <laughs> hang well i just let cialis clear out then switch tan and sex I, <laughs> gym tan laundry yes uh pt gives me anxiety and nauseous i use uh ben benadryl um and pepto pepto bismol oh. i think uh freedom fox i started getting i started getting nasty scar tissue from sub q in the belly yep. oh this is an interesting question yep. and a bit in the quad so now i'm rotating quads shoulders and glutes and injecting weekly rather than bi-weekly so yeah i have a question for you uh so the question is is what gauge needles are you using uh would be my first question now sub q i have a lot of people that have tried sub q injections especially like if you're a male females the dosage is so low that it usually doesn't cause any issues but even then it causes some irritation so they're actually usually recommended now to go into the muscle the absorption ratios are almost identical as each other and then uh, as far as quads, the issue with quads is you have so many nerve endings in there that a lot of people have issues with their quads. I think shoulders are one of the safest muscles. You don't have major arteries in there, right. but I, you definitely want to use a smaller gauge needle because of scar tissue build up when rotating certain sites. And then glutes, you have to be careful to actually aspirate. It's the only muscle that they really recommend aspirating because you have a major artery actually in there. So just make sure that you're aspirating with the glute, um, but definitely the gauge of needle will make a difference with how much scar tissue build up over time. It's explain for people who are going to listen to this who don't know what aspir 
rating is. Okay, so that's basically um, your pullback, but yeah, so gauge of the needle, by the way, let me just explain that. The smaller the number, the thicker the gate, like the actual width of the needle is. Whereas the higher you go, which is usually 27 is the highest or the lowest, the, well, the smallest that you go um, as far as needle size goes, one injecting oils. Insulin would be like a 31 gauge. Okay, now moving over to the other piece of this was, um, oh, aspiration. Aspiration is where you actually pull back on the needle. A lot of people like they'll do it in the shoulder and they'll pull back on it, but you have no major arteries. So if you pull blood into it, you know you're in a vein or an artery and you want to pull out. You never want to inject into vein or arteries. So that's a reason for aspiration. It's just a safety measure. What if but, you want to like Hulk smash and just fucking just mainline that I, test straight? I had, a, I, had a, blood, baby. I had a buddy that I, he feels like he accidentally did it. This was a couple years ago. And he said that he accidentally believes that he did it into his vein. And like he was... He did it and then he went to the gym and at the gym he was he had to leave he's like oh my god it was absolutely insane he couldn't focus it was so intense he felt like he was gonna have a heart attack uh it went away but it took several hours he had to go home and just he went to his car just like laid in his car for a while went home and just laid on his sofa at home what where would where would the testosterone eventually end up if you ended up like what organ would process it when it gets in the blood would it go through like the kidneys I mean, yeah, it, I mean, eventually it still gets processed through the liver, the kidneys and the liver and everything like that. The, the major issue, though, with injecting directly into the vein is the fact that you have benzoyl alcohol and oil and stuff like that in it. And if you've ever heard of test flu, that's usually where it's coming from is you're like going directly almost into a vein or you nick a vein and it goes some of that extra like sterile piece of it gets in there as well as the oil, too. So. It's mainly for that rather than the actual steroid. I'm pretty sure steroids, if you could separate it out, may actually be able to go intravenously. And I know there are certain ones that you can go intravenous with, but I, I think that they process them differently. I'm not 100% sure. Can you can you improve or, cause it's, I know like a lot of times you need surgery to really get rid of scar tissue. Uh, like maybe from some foam rolling or really deep tissue kind of massaging if you're like really trying to push in it, but there's no other way to really get rid of it scar tissue right now i think deep tissue is like the only like medicinal way to get really get rid of it but they may actually have laser techniques now where they can blast scar tissue i'm not 100 percent sure they have a lot of really cool stuff that they can do with lasers nowadays it could be like ultrasound some type of shit like that like shock wave treatment for for your boy um at freedom good. fox I, i've been more sedentary i wouldn't mind doing that like freezing thing where they freeze the fast cells just to see if it's effective but that's on a tangent i've been seeing i've been more sedentary so maybe my body is using less testosterone uh, i would just if you if you just take more action or like activity in general it makes a big difference in so many different areas of your life like so 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 freaking helpful just stress alone will increase testosterone levels, like reducing that. That's why ashwagandha works so well. I, I gotta, I gotta do some, I gotta do some blood work. Uh, I'm, I'm giving myself the, like, to, to, to create more content, but also just because I think it's fun. Like I'll do like one blood test per month. So I haven't done it yet this month. I've got to order it, but I don't know what I was gonna do yet this month. <laughs> HCG, go ahead. Run a CRP test. What's that? Run a CRP test. Have you ever ran one of those? Uh, no, I have not. What is it? Syriac. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah, me and Sam were talking about that. I actually did run that. Good. That C CRP test is like super underrated and no one really runs it for whatever reason. That's the uh, overall inflammation of your body, right? Yes. So it can be a good indicator for heart disease, actually. I can't remember what mine was, but we, uh, we actually compared our blood work when two or three episodes ago. Uh, and you ran yours, didn't you? It was like H. I did like a high sensitivity CRP, I think it is, because there's two, there's different ones you can run. And I had run like a high sensitivity one, and it was in like the green area. But then I was watching this holistic doctor. By the way, I think if I ever go more to the doctor regularly, um, I'm going to switch to a holistic doctor just because of the, the framework they use to like look at problems, in my opinion, is just better. Like, Bro, just I just did a podcast on my channel, uh, which will it hasn't launched yet. His name is Kyle Gillette. He is amazing. And the structure is basically you pay a subscription and you just check in with them. It's very cool. Um, so I'll, 
if you want, I'll send you his uh, profile after this, but very, very intelligent. And it combines medical and functional health together. So it's like not one size fits all. It's the combination. It's very cool. And just Freedom Fox said that he was doing 27 gauge for sub Q and 25 for everything else. So it doesn't seem like he's using harpoons. Yeah, I, I never had issue. I was using 22s for a while. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to use 22s. You know, it's like you can yeah. a pencil into your bucket. Can't use on 22. <laughs> It's like that's what I was instructed when I started, years. man. Worst advice ever. I have 18 gauges over there. Like I have 18 <laughs> gauges that I will never ever use. <laughs> so one time I asked this is when I I don't remember how it happened, but I accidentally shot with an 18 because I ran out of 22s and I was around <laughs> cannons. So I was like, ah, oh, how bad can it be? And you, as soon as you go into the skin, you're like, how thick is this thing? Like you know immediately how thick it is, and you're like, oh, this is a terrible choice. And then you're like, all right, well, let's get a 15 paper towel to clean up now. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I have I have some stuff that I've never used before. Um, hy hyaluronic acid, um, yeah, which a lot of like women will use in makeup products and stuff. But in the bodybuilding, they use it for sight enhancement instead of like other SEO products. And I have it, and that's what I got the 18 gauge for. And I was like. Mm, I don't want to do this shit. <laughs> if it's good hyaluronic acid, it, it depends on the viscosity of it. Some of them you have to use 25s, which are the widest that you usually have to go. But if the product's really good, you can actually use 27s to get away with it. It, it. I can't pull through a 27, even after heating it up slightly. It is like molasses. It is so thick. Dude, it, it's would, probably hydrolonic acid with something else. But yeah, I was like, I got two bottles of it. This is a year and a half. Bro, just man up and get the synthol. <laughs> Come on. Come on. No, Russian pipelines have shut down, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me, uh, uh, we'll get to that question in just a second, uh, Salas. Uh, um, see how that's right. I wanted okay. to pull this up real quick. So this is my buddies, uh, THS and T4 free. And it, and you can see the previous, it's just uh, his T4 is yeah. trending down. Uh, it's still in range. And, but, uh, but the question is, is they have no T3 reading. So this is why I always tell people, Get a full thyroid panel because what could happen there is, and I think his TSH reduced as well, right? Yeah. Or no, it increased slightly. Okay. From 2.6 so, to 2.9. So what could happen is his T3 uptake could have actually increased. And now he has more active metabolism rather than inactive metabolism, which is the T4. So he actually may be in a better position right now than he was in the past. So, I think he, I think he definitely is. He feels better. He, looks better he's like happier mood all that kind of shit or whatever well it's no shit he's on 500 milligrams of test <laughs> uh, my my free testosterone was 7.2 and reference is 7.2 to 24 very low to say the least yes uh that was determined by my blood work performed on april 1st of this year um i think there do we have context did he say different questions? He had an earlier question, but I don't think it provided. Oh, here it is. Hello, I'm 54 years old. Oh, okay. So your shit was really bad, and now you're feeling awesome. Yeah. Good. Makes perfect sense. Luckily, you got prescribed it because some doctors would be like, well, you're you're low normal. You know, it's 7.2. That's the bottom. And, you know, that's the normal range for human men at your age. So let's just tough it out. Here's some Cialis. Here's some fucking SSRIs. You know, <laughs> check in B in a year, bud. Yeah. Here, here's a good question from Andre. Uh, any recommendations for reducing SHBG? Can I take this? Uh, yeah, well, we're probably going to say the same thing. You go ahead. Well, I'll start with, I can do medical and I can do functional. Boron is an awesome one, which is where you were going to go, I think. Um, and then, like, really, really good for reducing that SHGB. And then the two drugs that are really good for controlling, one, reducing SHGB is Winstrol, and then uh regulating shgb or binding to shgb would be provider so oops i typed it in there went on, on all of our channels that was my best i was i was reading about shbg and like it's it's a combination it's like it's like uh it's like it's like the answer to a bunch of different math questions in the body. Like there's no like one thing. And I know that people do say boron and you're supposed to like cycle on cycle off. And some people have results, but from what I've seen, SHBG is really hard to change um, outside of like anabolics and SARMs just because it's a, you know, there's so many different factors that play into it. So I know that those guys with high, you know, SHBG, I mean, I say boron and 
500 milligrams of test. That'll crush your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Rad 140 in there. I want to hear what you guys' thoughts. So I'm going to stop taking traditional pre-workout soon just as an experiment. And I'm going to use probably like six grams of uh, malate. Caffeine? No, malate or uh, citrulline malate or whatever because it basically is a pump agent for your muscles. Uh, beetroot, probably four plus grams of beetroot powder. Uh, sodium, at least one gram, potentially higher than that, just to test all this stuff out. But I was also thinking about adding in, even though I'm on TRT, adding in boron pre-workout. Because when I, re I read a study on that recently, well, maybe like a couple months ago, and after two hours of taking boron, they had an increase in their free test levels. So I was like, ooh, that might be useful to take first thing when I get up, because then I go to the gym about two hours later. So get up first thing in the morning, take the boron pre-workout. I'm kind of cycling off because I'm not going to be taking it on weekends. And then I just add in pump agents, like the things I was just mentioning. Do you guys have any recommendations on other pump agents I could add in there with that? Or I don't want to add any stimulants. I want to try it because I've done stimulants my whole life. And I want to try to see about, you know, stopping those and see what the results will be without that. Yeah, I mean, you could do 100 milligrams of Viagra and like uh, 200 milligrams of Anabar. Oh, and Anabar? Anabar, did you say? Or yeah, it's a Dianabol. <laughs> Cialis, though. Cialis, I'll, I can add in the Cialis, though. I'll try that. I'll try adding in the Cialis. Yeah, the, the, so Cialis, two hours before the gym, um, is a good one. And uh, yeah, but ultimately, I mean, that sounds pretty good. I mean, you could add a, a little bit of a beta alanine in there, uh, like 3.2 grams. And, but yes, yeah, so I, I love citrulline is amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That, that's really good. Um, thousand milligrams of caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> thousand milligrams. G Giovanni, uh, guys is 1.5. Okay. For I am in the ass. I don't like 1.5 personally. Mm -hmm. That's a gigantic fucking. Movie, it's too big. It's I mean, unless you're, unless you're, you have to be pretty, you put a lot of extra weight on there to have to get through there. What a lot of people don't realize also is that, you know, you can take, just because the needle is one inch, you know, long, when you can, you can, you know, look, where the hell's my camera? I mean, I, you can push more further down into your skin, you know, so I'm saying I'm getting an extra quarter, half inch right there. So, you know, so I, I think one and a half. And if you do go a little further, now you're two inches into your ass, you're near your femoral artery. Yeah, I don't like that. I think an inch is good for most, for the glutes and the quads. And I think for most people, you can get away with a half inch with the shoulder. And if, you need to. You can push it in a little harder and pump. Yeah, I agree with that. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I I remember using a one and a half inch, like I don't know when I first did a cycle at eighteen or seventeen or something, and I was like, this thing is so fucking. And I was using like a twenty two gauge or twenty three gauge, and I was like, this thing is so fucking. Imagine doing a one and a half twenty two. It's just so massive. It's like uh, they're to the center of the earth. <laughs> I personally would go with a smaller needle, man. Uh, L-cardenine has helped my energy levels pre-workout. Does that make any sense? I don't know enough about that, but David, yes. go ahead and talk about that. Yes, 100%. It will help your energy. You can be a, be a depleted prune and then take L-carnitine and you feel like a new man almost. Um, it's pretty incredible. I, when you're in a very depleted state, L-carnitine becomes very prevalent. When you're not really depleted down, you don't notice usually too much energy levels, maybe a little bit. Uh, but injectable L-carnitine is phenomenal um, for a lot of reasons, not just reducing body fat, not just for the heart. So there's a studies that actually show that it prevents the left ventral hypertrophy as well. Um, and then if you're running in conjunction with other things, it becomes actually a synergistic effect. But energy levels, people don't really talk about how much energy it gives you. But when you're very depleted, L-carnitine can be an awesome uh, tool to increasing energy. Yeah. So what, what is that one that you want to cycle? I've never actually tried l carnitine No, you can say on a year round. It's just an amino acid. Yeah, but I didn't know if some of those things like I'm thinking of uh, hexarella and you're like that, that just because I think of it as a peptide similar uh, where you need to come off or just desensitizes. But I would only be doing it five days a week if I feel like even just doing an additional injection every day. Kind of <laughs> <for that. laughs> what do you guys know about NAD? NAD is amazing. That's what I if, keep hearing. If you can afford it. <laughs> it's so NAD, okay. Oral L-carnitine, garbage. Throw it in the garbage. You're wasting your money. 
Um, you have to do injectable. NAD plus, you have to do injectable. And it is very expensive. And you you cannot get it from compounding pharmacies anymore. And I don't know why. I think they pulled it from compounding pharmacies like two years ago or something. Um, and it was decently priced. And now you can't get it. So you can get it from your doctor. If you're getting it from your doctor, you might as well get it on like an IV drip. Um, but it is very, very expensive. But for rebooting like hypothalamus, pituitary axis ways and stuff like that. So brain chemistry and sex bottomed out sex hormones or thyroids and stuff like that. NAD plus can be an awesome tool, but unfortunately it's just not affordable for most people. And I, I never recommend NAD plus unless it's someone comes from a lot of money where I know I'm like, Hey, this is a solution that can help you very quickly, but I'm gonna find it for is, is it, is it that much? Is it that really that helpful? It's pretty darn good. There are also precursors that are natural, yeah, um, so, like broccoli so sprout, I think is one of them, which is a precursor to NAD plus within the body. So the precursors to NAD plus can potentially increase NAD plus potentially, but if you're running it synergistically with actual true NAD plus that is on IV drip, it can have some awesome benefits for like even longevity too. I was thinking I found, about that. I so. found NAD 10 milligrams or 10 milliliters uh basically a gram a milliliter for 190 bucks from a compounding pharmacy wait, so, 100, oh, wait, so what is it 10 one gram per vial um oh yeah okay so if that okay so it is one gram vial yeah one gram for in 10 milliliters what's the dose what is the dose on that david i cannot remember off the top of my head i was getting pretty deep into nad plus at one point and then i realized they basically pulled it from the market and i couldn't find it anywhere and i because you used to be able to get it cheaper and it's got so expensive that I was just like, I can't even recommend it anymore. And I can't get HRT clinics to prescribe it. I have a doctor that will script it for sure, but I'm, then you're paying a doctor fee just to get prescribed any deep. It, it doesn't make doctor. logistical sense in most situations, unfortunately. I think I'm gonna add in potentially later in the fall as a longevity protocol is injectable glutathione, not daily, cause I just don't want to do injections daily, but like maybe twice a week or just like, Hey, every weekend I'll just do the injections up or whatever, like 1200 milligrams, 600 milligrams, depending on how I feel like doing it. But just as like a longevity thing, because glutathione is freaking amazing. So yeah, I want to so, get some of that too. I do uh, injectable of glutathione and I can, because this is the first time I've actually implemented it. Uh, I got sick a few months ago and my liver enzymes for some reason came back over hundred this time, which is very uncommon. Usually I sit around 70 to eighties, but that's been since I was a teenager. And uh, so I was like, you know, I was like, let's just do it. I'm in prep anyways. I'm going to have androgenic drugs involved. So I switched the NAC to uh, injectable uh, glutathione three times a week and Tudka. And I kept the Tudka in. Oh my gosh. You can literally feel the difference in your body. It's insane. Wow. Like, like just feeling like cl cleaner almost, you know, sometimes when you eat shitty, shitty food and then you like have a clean meal and you're like, oh my God, this is so fucking amazing. I feel great type of thing. It's almost like a cleansing feeling. Absolutely. Like you just feel cleaner And when you're in prep, you don't realize sometimes like how bad you actually feel. Like a lot of people have some liver toxicity issues going on, especially if they're so people overuse orals. I don't really use orals to be honest. Like very, very small. Unless it's, unless it's DMP. Unless it's DMP. Oh, unless it's DMP. <laughs> so, but life lifestyle factors is not what they include for like or orals, yes. But if you're drinking or if you're taking NSAIDs or like if you're taking any type of oral medication, it, whether it's a steroid or like just any type of medication, you could have a high liver enzymes. Just, the number one drug that kills people is Tylenol, by the way, you guys. And that's liver. So um, I'm messing, I'm messing this. Oh, <laughs> anyway, I found, <laughs> I found NAD um, from what I was looking online. It looks like it's a 20, roughly 20 milligram dosage three We're times a week. Definitely going to get a video taken now. <laughs> uh, this is, this is uh, from a medical doctor. You can't just go by this. You have to get it prescribed just yeah. for everybody watching. Or yeah. <laughs> so that, that, that's actually not something that I would want to incorporate right now. Cause I don't know how long that would last. Or, or I just don't know enough about NAD, but uh, adding in more of those like longevity type protocol things. You had also mentioned you got your B12 checked. Well, let's read this comment and then tell us about your B12. Yeah, this is a good comment. Andre, I think I genetically have higher SHBG. 
done, well, couldn't you just take steroids, right? Uh, done basically all the right things for two years now. 10 milligrams uh, boron, still elevated, but trending down. Well, that's good. It might take a long time if doing it naturally. Yes. Yeah, you could just take some testosterone. Uh, well, no, <laughs> that is testosterone will, it will increase SHGB. It won't reduce it. Yeah, I thought when I was, because his uh, SHBG is actually lower. No, the reason started. being is when you upregulate how many androgens you have in your body, your body naturally upregulates how many androgens it can carry, which upregulates SHGB levels. So if you increase testosterone, you increase usually SHGB along with it. That's one of the issues with increasing testosterone when it becomes like, you're like, oh, it's less efficient or my blood is saturated. It's not blood saturation. It's actually the SHGB levels rising. So it binds all that testosterone. So you're not utilizing as much. So, um, yeah, upregulating, up, upping the testosterone usually is not the answer, actually. So what, um, oh. what other natural things could Andre do or think about to start to research to potentially lower his SHBG faster? Right. You- 40, LGD, 40, 33, Austrian. So <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just going to drop the one product that he's, he should get on. Uh, my code's David10, but get on Morpho test. I've seen it improve people's free testosterone levels. It already has boron in there and a few other things. It has ashwagandha in there. It's a very, very cool supplement. The, mo- the highest natural T levels I've ever seen. It's someone that actually ran a cycle. And it was six weeks after the cycle was done. So it usually should be pretty low. They're already off their PCT. They were only on uh, Morpho test. 979 testosterone. The highest I've ever seen a natural person. Wow. Did you, do you guys know that vitamin C is also uh, yep. a natural diuretic? Yeah, I use it for my show. Above, like, what do you take about two grand? Like, I, I haven't tested it myself because I haven't had any need to, but it increases the gastric emptying, basically. Yep. So you could combine that with something like dandelion root. So you, you will use that more so during a show if you're being if you feel constipated? So you can use vitamin C for the constipation issues for sure. Uh, you can use magnesium for constipation issues. They both have natural diuretic effects because it helps to empty one magnesium. They work in different ways, but magnesium would help empty gut chamber, like pull water into the gut chamber and get it out of the body. Um, that's why, how it hydrates on the bowels and moves the bowels. Well, that's interesting. So, so magnesium actually is able to pull water into uh, the gut or like the intestine yeah. type of thing? The intestines, yeah. So it pulls it, yeah, it pulls in the gut and it can create that flushing effect. So, um, so I mean, that combined with vitamin C would probably be perfect because vitamin C increases gastric emptying. Yeah, but it's not a diuretic, it, like it's not a pharmaceutical diuretic, so no one wants to listen to me. <laughs> yeah. But think about that. <laughs> think about that condom. Con- what's the dose for magnesium? I mean, it's it's very bio-individual, right? So like vitamin C, like even one gram will start to have a diuretic effect for sure. Um, and then like it depends on how much water you need to pull. Some people are just dry and they don't need to pull water. But then magnesium, there's different forms of magnesium. There's magnesium citrate, which is the more common form that people use for colonoscopies, like they drink that bottle and that's magnesium citrate. It doesn't absorb through the blood vein brain barrier. So it's really good for pulling water. You have magnesium oxide, which is garbage. You have magnesium glycinate, which is good. Actually, I like it for muscle relaxing effects. And you have magnesium L-thornate, which will, uh, glycine is also decent. It's okay at breaking blood brain barrier. And that magnesium L-thornate, which is the best at breaking blood brain barrier. But they all have different, it depends on what you're going for. So like for central nervous system fatigue, magnesium L-thornate is probably the better option. Gastric emptying, they're all decent. Or well, not gastric emptying, but um, pulling water into the gut. They're all do, decent at it. But do you, So if, if somebody was like... Um... Say they're like going to the beach. Like, like I live 10 minutes to the beach. I go to the beach often, but you know, a couple times a week easily. Um, and if somebody, if I was like, hey, I want to look drier going to the beach, I could add in magnesium. Uh, I, I don't know what magazine, magnesium I have in the cupboard. Um, or I Probably oxide. Most whatever the Walmart has, I'm sure. That's oxide. Gonna, yeah. Okay. Um, and what, what was the, what's the dose that you generally might use for yourself? So oxide and citrate, you're gonna to have to run higher. Um, you're probably talking like 500 milligrams per serving, 400 to 500 milligrams, maybe in 600 milligrams. But then because of how it is, you're probably gonna to have to take it with like three to four meals and you're probably gonna be pooping a lot. 
Um, and, then, and then I'd also probably do at least one gram or maybe 1500 of uh, vitamin C with each one of those meals too. With the vitamin C, you'd probably want to do one gram servings and take it with meals. Yeah. But I would not do it with like five meals. Dude, you're going to have such severe diarrhea. <laughs> It'll clean you out, but... <laughs> But but then I'll be a, like a lot drier for that. And you do this you do this twenty four yeah, hours in advance. Yeah, you'll look ripped as shit while you're shitting your pants at the beach. You're, 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 you're uh, listening as the shit is running down your leg. <laughs> uh, dude, I think this has been a, I think this has been a lot of fun doing the live. I don't know what you're, you guys want to give thoughts on this, and then we'll wrap everything up. What do you What do you guys think of the live so far? I like it. I like being able to pop up the questions. I think that adds a nice little thing. I know we've tried to do that with like Dave's Twitch, but I like this. This is good. Got five people from coming from test your levels. I love it. So you guys are awesome. Yeah, I think yeah. we have to 20, 22 concurrent viewers at one point. So that's fucking dope. Uh, David, what do you think of like going live like this? No, this is awesome. I've actually wanted to do a l actual live podcast. And I think it needs to be a thing. No one's doing it. We can talk about the top topic and people are dropping really good questions in there. It's fun to interact with you guys. Um, and yes. Oh yeah. Make sure wherever you're, whoever channel you're watching on, whether it's uh, TYL, David's or mine, press the like button, press the subscribe button, press the bell notification. We're going to be doing this every week, next Thursday, 6 30 PM EST next week, 6 30 PM EST. So, Stay tuned for that. You guys want to uh, show anything else, uh, David, real quick? You want to go first? No, I, I really like the fact that we can actually show the questions too on the screen rather than just reading it out. I think because some people are very visual, but no, I, I appreciate you all for being here. here. I'm glad to be back. My show is done. I am back, you guys. We're rolling deep. Yes, this has been almost a year. I feel like we started about a year ago. Yeah. Close right? to this it. Is hey. This is damn. This is cool. I think this will be the next evolution of what David was saying. There is live shows for just about everything else. I personally cannot, and I'm, and we're all in the, the fitness arena, and I cannot think of one live show in the fitness arena that just shows up every week and helps people, answers questions, and talks about the stuff. It's all pre-recorded and then released. Where we can do this, and maybe, and we can even have people on. For segments where i can share the link to people who are hey i want to come on and do a five minute segment and we just chat with them listen to what they're going on and we can go back and forth with that so there's so many cool things that we can do here uh, appreciate everybody who's tuned in uh tyl did you want to um show anything else before we get off here uh hcgains.com i've got an own no ai product so you can stop taking remedex i have turkestrone um which is basically it's it's like anadrol times five it'll get them fucking <laughs> massive um, and then just the links to my normal affiliate stuff, but that's at the bottom of my video. Uh, or you guys can also check out, uh, if you care to look at research compounds for research animals, you can check out triggered, uh, brand and date, or if you like bodybuilding or need help with the coaching stuff, Dave is not going to talk about it himself. So I'm going to tell him, but you can reach out to David on Instagram for coaching or coaching related stuff. If you're into the, what you, you only do, or primarily 97% of the stuff is bodybuilding women's type stuff as well right yeah absolutely uh, a lot of i do a lot of lab corrections and gut corrections as well that's a, a lot of the medical and functional side of it but uh bodybuilding for sure hey we appreciate you i i am now a guest on this podcast he's looking at it on my channel so he's like uh, oh, who are these guys so <laughs> these are yes. these are the podcast bros Yes, yeah. yes. Cool. Awesome. I'm going to I'm going to press end end broadcast and we will be back here next week. I'm sure we'll all be releasing content probably between oh, now and then. I do I do want to drop one thing. Um so if you guys are looking for a meal prep company, there is a 40% off link from Trifecta in my bio, but you have to go directly through the link. So if tell, you tell them what tell them what I go to. Tell them what? Um, <laughs> Why are you <laughs> lagging so bad when you're asking the question? <laughs> Sam got to upgrade that Wi-Fi, that Wi-Fi. Yeah, so Trifecta is a national meal prep company. Super good. At one point in time, I believe all their stuff was organic. I believe most of their stuff is organic right now. And it actually got me through the prep, and it's keeping me on diet post-show. So it has been the, a game changer for me. I just do the bulk meats to save the money. Honestly, I'm just being transparent. But their food is phenomenal. So. And they can find that in your Instagram bio? 
um, Instagram bio or YouTube bio. YouTube bio is probably going to be easier because they can open it from the desktop and it'll just send them directly to the desktop. It's order easier to order from the desktop. Gotcha. That's what I was trying. That's what I was trying to ask. I don't know if I'm still wrecked or not. You're good <laughs> now. <laughs> better, better. With all my magnesium, man. You're looking like up. like you're looking like 98 internet, like 1998. 2000 <laughs> internet. Uh, but I have like the absolute worst uh, setup. My computer is if it, <laughs> my computer is over 10 years old. Does not have a Wi-Fi antenna inside of it. I have a jerry rigged. Uh, now, now David's going to show off. Uh, I have a, uh, my computer's over 10 years old. I have a tethered old cell phone that has a Wi-Fi antenna to get internet to my computer because <laughs> I'm that cool. So, All right, guys. Gonna We're going to start a, a GoFundMe for a router <laughs> for Sam and a, a Chrome pad so that he can upgrade. Yeah, we gotta we gotta get you upgraded. <laughs> yes, yes, especially if we're gonna be doing this regular. But it works like ninety eight percent of the time, so it's like, why am I gonna waste money on shit? That anyway, <laughs> I, say, I say we I say we end this. We let people wanting more, wanting to come back and see our beautiful faces, so we can talk about research and gear cool. and TRT and good stuff. Episode thirty, you can check out the previous episodes and all your favorite podcast episodes on podcast platforms. Peace. <laughs>